Welcome to OpenYAN series of videos. This is a part of the video series about the computer architecture. In this video, we will see about the basic factors of memory design in computers. Memory pathways are similar to roads. Bandwidth, the bits per second, is similar to the maximum number of cars or bikes that a section of the road can handle at any given time. It is directly related to the width or the amount of lanes that we have on roads. The frequency that is designed in megahertz or gigahertz is equivalent to the maximum speed limit imposed on these cars. A higher speed limit will allow more vehicles to travel at a faster rate. However, the collisions may occur more frequently. Memory latencies can be thought of as junctions with traffic lights on these roads. They cause delays in order to avoid vehicle collisions or collisions in between cars and the bikes. Shortening the wait period will increase the flow of vehicles. However, this is on the condition that they are ready and have enough time to move on. Ideally, we would desire an infinitely large memory with immediate access to every word. But we are forced to be realistic and go for a hierarchical memory architecture, each of which is bigger in capacity than the previous level, but slower during the access. Ideally, we would desire a memory wherein data and instruction are always next to each other. But we are forced to be realistic again and go for a paging and caching which can lead to hits or misses. Ideally, we would like the power consumption to be nominal and the memory to not overheat or leak during the discharge. But we are forced to accept the reality of capacitive discharge. So there are many factors which make us different from the wish and the grant of a genie. What we have here is the pyramid hierarchy of the memory architecture in current day computers. On top of this pyramid, we have the process registers, which are the CPU process registers, which are super fast, super duper expensive, and but they are tiny in capacity. They are used by the CPU to perform the uh, load and store operations and the current day, current day, day normal operations. Then we have the CPU caches, which store the information and the data that is needed for the operations. They are faster. They are expensive, but they are small in capacity. They are not tiny as when compared to the registers, but they are small. So we have three levels of caches in current day architecture. Then we have the physical memory, which is the RAM, which we put it into our uh, laptops and the CPUs, which is defined as DDR RAM and RD RAM. And they are fast, reasonably priced as when compared to the cache memory, but they are average in capacity, which is in the order of gigabyte, one gigabyte or two gigabyte are the maximum of 16 GB RAM. Then we have the solid state memory. These are non-volatile flash based memory, which is our like our SD or the flash drive, the pen drives that we have. They are of average speed as when we, if we compare the USB rate, it is around 3 Mbps or 4 Mbps or maximum of 10 Mbps. They are priced reasonably and they are also at an average capacity. The virtual memory is a file based memory, which is related to the mechanical hard disk. They are slow, they are cheap, but they are very large in capacity and they can store data which can be used for future use. So here is what we have is as an hierarchy starting from the fastest to the slowest and the smallest to the largest. There are many factors that concern a memory designer as there are many factors that concern a computer architect. The first and foremost is that of the size. How big is that memory chunk supposed to be? Is it going to be smaller so that I can make it faster or is it going to be bigger so that I can make it cheaper? The second is that of the hierarchy. In which hierarchy level should it be placed? As we had seen in the earlier case, in the earlier slide, there are many hierarchical levels and each one has its own merits and demerits. The sec third one is that of the hit time. How fast, if the data is requested, can it be returned back to the CPU for processing? Let's take the case of a cache. A hit time is the number of CPU cycles that it takes to return data from the cache if there is going to be a cache hit. So if we have a hit, we have a miss. So what is a cache miss? Cache miss is a request for data onto the cache, but the data is not available on the cache. So something has to be done so that data has to be fetched and placed on the cache and then given back to the CPU. Then there is a case of penalty. Penalty is the CPU stall or the number of cycles the CPU has to wait so that the data can be made available to it. So that is the penalty for a cache miss. It has to be reduced so that it can be faster. Then there is a case of writing. If something has to be written onto the cache, is it going to be a write-through cache so that the data will be immediately written onto the secondary storage 
or is it going to be a delayed write wherein the data will be written when there is going to be when the cache is going to be cleared then there is a case of par so what is the amount of par that is required so that the data is kept valid and the discharge is kept low and then there is a case of independency wherein the memory is kept independent of the cpu so there are many different factors that concern a memory designer and they have to be taken care of for proper memory design there are different factors that concern us in when we design a cache the first one is that of a locality let's take an example of an interview the first question that any interviewer asks is what is your name and it is followed by what is your qualification and tell me about your project so this is a set of series of next next questions that we expect and similarly in processing the cpu expects the next question or the next instruction and in the data to be readily available and they will have to be placed in consecutive in consecutive position so that the fetch is faster but there are branches and loops which can take different tributes and different branches and that is one thing which will have to be there considered and the spatial and temporal locality will be discussed in the future videos then there is a case of hit time and miss penalty so we want the hit time to be less but the miss penalty can should also be less so ideally we can have a very big memory chunk wherein the miss will be less but the hit time will be high and therefore there has to be a balance between this and then the par wherein the par or the energy coefficient or the joules per data request will have to be reduced then there is a case of read cache versus write cache do i keep my cache should be always read only cache or is it going to be a write only read write cache the read only cache is something like wherein the write is write through and the write cache is going to be a delayed cache so there are different factors that are so there are different factors that concern a cache design but a cache miss is one reality which we cannot miss there are different scenarios wherein a cache miss can happen and the first one is due to that of capacity just because the cache cannot be very huge there is always a cache miss just because we don't have the data or the capacity to hold the data the second one is that of the compulsory cache miss wherein there is a conflict because the context has changed on the cpu or the processor and those are the compulsory and conflict cache misses hence there are different scenarios wherein the caches can be missed and the penalty will have to be taken in case of a in case of a stall on cpu so in th these things will be discussed in the future videos and thank you for listening to this video on open yan video series do contact us and uh, the facebook is there on facebook.com/openyan or write to us at ping@openyan.com and visit us at openyan.com thank you have a nice week bye see you in the next video